everybody and welcome. It's Devo here and today we are back with our visual guide for Andapur Keep Hard Mode. First things first, you gotta get around to unlocking it and you can find the quest right here in the 7th Heaven in Mordona. The quest itself will send you out to Camp Tranquil to talk to an NPC real quick and then send you the front door in order to check out Amdapur Keep and its new renovations. First section of the dungeon is marked with Ochus, Wolves, and Ram Bulls. The Ochus serve as hard gates to prevent much speedrunning, so you have to kill them to advance further. The Ochus themselves are perma rooted and when engaged spawn B adds to accompany them. The B adds are easily AoE down. After defeating the second Ochu, you find yourself the first boss in Andapur Keep Hard Mode, Anchag, the Headless Horseman. Anchag on the whole doesn't have very many mechanics to deal with, but you do have to deal with them all in a very quick and concise manner, otherwise wipes are inevitable. The first thing to note is Anchag's large cleave range. The tank should always keep this boss faced away from the party at all times. Now for Anchag's first kill large red target will be put on a random party member's head. After a few seconds, Anchag will then begin channeling a blue beam, which deals large pulses of damage to that target, as well as applying stacks of immunity and vulnerability. The best way to deal with this mechanic is when a party member sees the red mark on their head, they should immediately begin running behind one of the four statues in the room. Anchag's channel will then be channeled onto the statue instead of them. It is important to not get hit by this channel because immediately after channeling, Anchag will begin casting a charge move on the exact same party member. The best way to deal with this is to begin running away and continue running away until Anchag finishes his charge animation. After the charge, the boss will then launch a large damage single target nuke directed at the tank. He will then follow this up with a Hall of Sorrow AoE damage nuke directed at a random party member. These are all the boss mechanics in their entirety. There is one final thing to note, however. The four statues in the rune that protect you from channel damage can also be destroyed should they take too much damage. When these statues are destroyed, they collapse, dealing a large amount of damage to anyone around them. And should Anchek's channel not be completed, they will continue to take the channel damage, almost assuredly resulting in their death. So be sure when hiding from channel never to hide behind a statue that's already taken damage. Also remember that these statues can take damage from all other moves that Anchek does. So try to keep him in the center of the room at all times and the statues out of his cleave. Manage the statues and mechanics well and the Headless Horseman will fall, allowing you to make your way even deeper into the keep. The next groups of trash are filled with Wamora moths, Malboros, flytraps, and trees. Stationary flytrap mobs will put down poison patches that you need to avoid standing in, as well as avoiding the bad breath. Next come 
the stationary trees, which serve the same purpose as the Ochus did in the first section. These trees will be accompanied by Whomping Roots that apply vulnerability stacks, as well as summon Womora Larvae Axe. Take down two of each of these packs and you'll find yourself with the second boss, the Boogeyman. Boogeyman's first two basic abilities are Smite of Bloom and Ripple of Bloom. Smite of Bloom will target a random party member and deal a decent amount of single target damage to them. Ripple of Bloom will deal the same amount of damage but to everyone in the party. Boogeyman also has several invisibility mechanics related to the luminescence mobs in the room. When these orbs are killed, they lay down a patch of light. This patch gives a short duration buff called Irradiated to anyone who stands in it. Should an invisible boogeyman come in contact with the light patch or an irradiated party member, he will be knocked out of invisibility and back into the physical realm. The next mechanic is a large conal move called Entrance. This will target a random party member, and anyone hit by the cone will be mind controlled to attack other party members. At 60%, Boogeyman will raise two corpse adds from the ground in order to assist him in his fighting. Simply pick them up and AOE them down along with the Boogeyman. At around 40%, Boogeyman will split himself into two bodies and both will go invisible. At the same time, three corpses will rise from the room, two much like the ones you've already fought, but the third one, a larger one, will begin channeling a move called Spontaneous Combustion. This ability, if completed, will do a large amount of AoE damage to everyone in the party as well as applying a bleed debuff. As such, this mob should be focused and burned down quickly. If Yad's dead, you can go about killing Luminescence in order to reveal the two bogeymen. But remember, every time a bogeyman is revealed from invisibility, he will use the Entrance Conal attack. With both bogeymen dead, the only way to go is up. next section is more of an event than it is trash pulls. Once the orb in the center of the room is activated, a countdown will begin. You have a set amount of time to dispatch five waves of mobs before the demon walls close in around you. Last wave is especially nostalgic. If you can kill all the enemies in time, you find yourself at the final boss, the demonic jester Ferdiad. without giant pits to fall into, and that's exactly what awaits you at the edges of Ferdiad's arena. Ferdiad's first mechanic is Blackout, a basic move that will deal damage to everyone in the party. The next ability to watch out for is Wild Card. Ferdiad will reposition himself into the middle of the room and begin channeling the moon. He will then spawn three tethered imp adds. These adds all need to be killed before the circle grows to the entire size of the arena, or everyone will eventually be blasted off into the pits below. Once the adds are down, simply remain in the area outside of wild card's range until it goes off. The 
next ability is Gesture Free. Boss will spawn a low HP add that roots a random party member in place. He will then begin channeling a large conal attack. This ad needs to be killed so the person can escape. Tanks can generally soak the damage, but other party members should be freed as soon as possible. Next, Ferdiad will summon spears on a single side of his platform, and they will shoot across, damaging anyone in their path. While these spears are active, he will do his best Ash impression, summoning spinning size on two random party members. At about 50%, Ferdiad will then use Wild Card a second time. But this time, he will target two random party members with the Rooting Jellies, as well as summon only a single large HP Tethered Ad. It's important to note who gets rooted, as any melee DPS need to be freed quickly to help with the ad. This time, when Ferdy adds summon spears, he will summon them on two sides of the platform, which will make crisscross patterns throughout the room. These aren't too hard to dodge, except when you factor in the spinning sides. After the spears fly, Ferdy Edge should be in prime limit break territory. Finish them off from here, and congratulations, you have completed Amnipur Keep Hard Mode. Thank you all for watching. As always, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again next time.